In this video, we're going to um, talk about electric fields. And um, this is the force field that is around every electric charge. So this is what actually creates that potential that we've been talking about and also creates the forces, those positive, positive, you know, the, um, the attraction forces versus the repulsion forces. So it's these electric fields. This is what causes everything to happen. So first, you don't need to know this, but in case you're wondering, um, a guy named Michael Faraday is the one that thought of the idea of electric fields. And so the definition is right here, the space around every electrically charged body. So it's a force field around every electrically charged body. So if you need to mark that as definition, by all means do that. When another charge enters the field, a force acts on it. So again, it's these fields that are interacting that are creating these forces and creating that potential we talked about. So electric fields have both magnitude and direction. And so what kind of quantity has magnitude and direction? A vector quantity. So vector quantity, magnitude, and direction. And so for electric fields, we're going to represent them as arrows. And the arrows will point in the direction of the electric field. So let's talk about how the field lines are drawn. So up here first, it may be hard to see, but this is a positive charge, and the field lines are pointing outward. This is a negative charge, and the field lines are pointing inward. And so first, the field is represented by vectors or arrows that are drawn around the charge. And the charge in the center of the object, so the charge is out here. The charge in the very center is zero. So let's talk about why. We have an arrow going out here, an arrow going out here. They're perfectly opposite each other, so they cancel out. Arrow here, arrow here. Again, equal and opposite, so they cancel out. So all of these arrows cancel out on each other, creating a charge of zero in the center. Same thing happens here, except the arrows are pointing in. This arrow and this arrow cancel out. This one and this one cancel out. So all of them cancel, and so in the very center, it's zero. The direction is based on the force of a positive charge. So if here you have a positive charge. If another positive came in, which direction would it go? It would go outward. That's why the arrows point out of a positive. If you were to bring a positive charge towards a negative, what direction would it go? It would go in towards the negative charge, hence the arrows point inward. So it's all based on what would a positive charge do to these objects. And the density of the vectors indicate magnitude. So the more arrows you draw around it, the stronger the field. Fewer arrows, less the field. So how do we draw them? A negative charge has the arrows pointing in. A positive charge has the arrows pointing out. You will need to be able to draw these. So make sure you have these drawn somewhere. So here are the rules. Lines always go from positive to infinity. So in other words, they point outward towards infinity. Lines go from infinity to negative. So in other words, they point inward to the negative. And then lines always go from positive to negative because they're going out of the positive into the negative. The lines never cross. So electric field lines will never cross, and they are always evenly distributed. So if you have one going out to the right, you need one going out to the left, evenly distributed. The density represents the amount of charge. So the more lines you draw around it, the stronger that charge will be. And the lines are always going to be perpendicular to the surface. So that's why you'll see here that they're drawn in the outward circle. So pointing out again. Yeah. So what if two or more charges are present? 
Um, don't worry about drawing these right now. I'll actually draw them in class. Um, to show you a little bit simpler way, but the idea is the reason why positive and negative attract is because these field lines pull these together. So you can see that the lines are going from positive to negative, so it's pulling them together. Here we have a positive and a positive, and they repel each other. And so what you see is those field lines pushing against each other. So pushing against each other. That's why they repel. For a negative negative, it would look exactly like this, except all of those arrows would point inward. But same idea as they push against each other. So we can actually quantify electric fields. Um, they're measured in newtons per coulomb. So electric fields are based on how strong a force is to hold a particular charge in place. So, newtons per coulomb, force per charge. And it's also based on the potential for the interaction and the distance that they are apart. If you've got a positive-positive, the closer they are together, the stronger that force is going to be, so the stronger the field is. So, it's also based on electric potential and distance. So to find the magnitude of the field, there's two different equations. And depending on what you're given determines which equation to use. Electric field is E. So magnitude of electric field is E. So you'll notice both equations have E. One of them, we said, was the amount of force per coulomb of charge. So F is for force. F is always for force. And Q is for charge. We also said depending on the amount of potential and the distance between them determines how strong the field can be as well. So V is for voltage or electric potential. So hopefully remember those are the same thing. And D is for distance. So why don't we do some examples using these. So my first one is a force of 0 .005 newtons is applied to an electron. The charge of one electron is this amount. This number will always be given to you for tests and quizzes and things like that. It is the charge of one electron. It is on the equation sheet. How strong is the field? So we have a force of 0 .005 newtons, and we have a charge of 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. So force and charge means we're going to use E equals F over Q. We're looking for E. Our F is 0 .005. And our charge is 1.6 E negative 19. Again, make sure you use E notation so you know that you're putting in the calculator correctly. When you do the math here, you get an extremely strong electric field, 3.125 E16. Now, the unit comes from this equation. This is in newtons. This is in coulombs. So it's newtons per coulomb. So this one is actually going to use both equations. So we have a charge of 0 0.005 coulombs, that's Q, is moved 0.25 meters, that's our distance, through a uniform electric field of this, 350 newtons per coulomb, that's E. How much electric potential, this is our first unknown, so that's our V, did the charge possess? Well, let's start here. The equation that uses V is E equals V over D. The equation that uses V is E equals V over D. So we're given E, 
that's 350. We're given D, which is 0.25, and we're looking for V. So we're going to multiply both sides by 0.25. That cancels out over here, and we're left with a voltage of 87.5. volts. The second one says what force, let's use a different color, what force was required to keep it at that location? Force is F. This is our other equation. E equals F over Q. So again, E is still the same. 350. We're looking for F and we're given our charge, our Q, of 0 0.005. So again, we're going to multiply by the denominator and we get a force of 1.75 and force is measured in newtons.